I think uh, I've done that thing now where I'm specifically checking the news, like, you know, sometime in the afternoon, once a day, and then trying to go about the rest of my day. There's not really much to update you after that. Um, I've been checking sometimes the Donald Trump press conferences because they're hilarious the way he's kind of going at the press and the way the press are going back at him. It's just turned into this really weird... I think some polit- some people who, who are following politics closer than I am would have probably hoped that this crisis would have brought the best out of Trump, right? He would have been acting quote unquote presidential. But if anything, it's basically shown you that he just double, triples down, quadruples down on everything. Um he doesn't like normally if I think now the common thing I find you've got to follow this guy on Twitter. I don't know what he does. I think he just sits in front of his T V recording every Trump appearance that he does. But every press conference this guy called um Aaron Rupta. I'll check I'll, I'll show you actually. Let me see if I can find here on my thing. It's Aaron that's it. Aaron Rupert, I'm going to say he probably works on Vox or something, or I assume one of those kind of left-leading places because he does not a fan of the old uh, Donald at all. So this guy, you should follow him on Instagram. I'm oh, sorry, on Twitter, sorry. He's called, his handle is um, A-T-R-U-P-A-R. So A-T-R-U-P-A-R, Aaron Rupert. And he is a journalist at Vox.com, it seems like. But he essentially does this, which I'm showing on screen. He's got all the press briefings that Trump does from the White House, he essentially gets all the screen grabs, super high res, I'm not sure if he's got something hooked up on his computer or he's watching them live on the live stream probably, but he's always sitting on there, you know, clipping up little interesting questions and quibits and all that stuff, and um, it's just interesting to see how um, combative Trump is during this whole thing, you know, instead of it being a time to galvanise the country, even, even if, because I think some people were saying that most of the reason why he's so combative is because he's worried that this crisis is going to lead to him is going to damage his re-election uh, bid, right, for next term, which is understandable, I guess, in some respects. I, I know we'd want our world leaders to be a little bit more altruistic, to be a little bit more um, selfless, but really and truly, man or woman, if you decide to enter a presidential race, you're pretty sociopathic, right? You have a pretty large ego in it, right? Um, uh, you're quite self-centered in some regards. If you think you should be the leader of the free world, especially, right, or you should be a leader of any sort of nation state, right? You, you, there's obviously something in your brain wiring that means that, you know, you're not your average everyday folk. So if you competitive in press conferences, if you have these weird little personal personality ticks and stuff, and I don't know, I, I should come to expect it. It's sort of like, you know, our greatest creatives, our most fantastic artists, people who kind of, you know, um, leave audiences in awe. They're the ones that, I should be left to be weirdos, isn't it? You don't want to iron them out and turn them into like, you know, boring Liverpool Street wankers out on the night out on the Thursday, isn't it? You want them to be as weird as possible. So the fact that Trump attacks his opponents, I don't really mind it. But you just would have thought in this time of need when things are going really crazy and you've got this invisible vi- invisible enemy, I think he calls it, right, <laughs> that he's at war with, you would have thought he would have tried to be a wartime president, you know, do aside with all the partisan bullshit and just, you know, Government as a country, and if and if anything, that could have maybe helped him. That could have maybe helped to sway some. Because the thing with he, the thing that he's probably just worried about is that his base what is always going to back him in it, right? It's like whoever's your fan is going to be going to be a fan. I guess his worry is that because I think from reading in between lines and just re- repeating what I heard other people say, he supposedly didn't win the popular vote in the states in it when he was facing against Hillary. Hillary uh, won the popular vote as in you know just from the population. Um, she got more votes in her favor, but then you're meant to also get votes within the what is that I think it's the con- Congress or whatever people that sit in those seats that are all white and old and wrinkly. You're meant to get votes for them too, right? And I don't know what it is because I'm not a politics dude, but if that's the case, looking at it from the outside in, he might be worried that because he lost a popular vote the first time around and because this is happening, it might affect his overall popularity with the nation overall because you know it means that the majority of people didn't want him in where he was able to finagle the system and get himself in the seat. Cool, he did it, he smashed it. But then if this is happening, people are already trying to blame him for it, which you can't really. And I think even if you're an ardent anti-Trumper, right, orange man bad, you can't really say it's his fault. I think everyone's dealt with it pretty poorly, uh, apart from maybe two or three countries. It's not been a, you know, no one's got, no one so far has got an A-star really, right? Everyone's kind of, even the good ones are probably 
at best got like a C plus, right? Or a lower B. No one's really done that well. So the fact that he's had some missteps here and there, he shouldn't be chastised for it. And again, you can't blame him directly for this virus coming to this or going to the States, whatever it may be. But yeah, it's just funny to just to see how combative some of these little press junkets are, man. I'll show one of them. Actually, let me see if I can get one up here. It's just kind of one clip. It's just always, you know, there's some of the stuff that's been asked. What is this? Ask about hair salons. What does it say here? Can you weigh in on this? Because nail salon so the caption is ox how it's possible for hair salons and tattoo parlors in georgia to reopen burke says if there's a way that people can social distance and do these things then they can do these things i don't know how tattoo parlors yeah. dr burks can you weigh in on this because the people of atlanta want to hear from you as well as much as they want to hear from their governor and from you yeah I think, I think it's fine what, what about how do you success, uh, safely have hair salons and nail salons and tattoo parlors where people where is apparently that? where is this that? is in georgia where, where people have to inherently be close together. I think what I've been trying to communicate over the last several days is it's really important that the governors and mayors communicate critical information to their communities and show very clearly the data. Remember, we wanted this data and evidence-based. The data that they okay, use... This is not about This is more so about... Let me see one more they're arguing. Yeah, this is the one of this. Some critics are saying that you are using the virus now in this crisis to follow through on that promise to reduce no, legal immigration. No, no. Well, I want people that are in this country, I want our citizens to get jobs. I don't want them to have competition. We have a very unusual situation where something came in that nobody has seen for many, many decades. Probably 1917 would be the closest analogy if you look at it, when you look at the contagion, the kind of contagion we're talking about. So, no, I'm not I'm not doing that at all. I want... I, I, I can't want... find a good one, but there's good ones where you just be a little bit more argumentative. See if I can get one. Da, 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 da. Stop market, Trump lines. Da, da, da. That's about Kim Jong condition. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You check it out yourself and find it, but it's pretty funny. Um, he tweets, he does all this stuff on there, you know, puts it out on there, and you can check and see if you are orange man bad, yeah or nay. 